good. <laughs> Start intro to construction. Fontana, got the mayor in the building. You know what it is. I'd like to uh, welcome you to Pathway for Boys to Men uh, introduction to construction. And I want to thank everybody for coming in. Uh, we have some refreshments back there as well if you need something cold to drink or some peanuts or something like that. Uh, but before we get started, I'd like to ask uh, Pastor Leroy to come in. Uh, say a few words. We thank you, Lord, for all that you do. You are the master builder. And as we come, Lord, to learn about how to build, to build young men's lives, we give you all the glory. And we ask you, Lord, to bless everyone who's here, bless those that are coming. And we pray, Lord, that they will receive a blessing from you as they get all the information that they need. Pathway Boys to Men is a wonderful organization. We thank you, Lord, for its creation. Bless the hand that created it, Lord. Bless Brother Randolph, Lord, and his staff. Bless all these people that are here, Lord. We pray, Lord, that we will have a wonderful time learning to build and we will have a be, be able to have families that are beneficial to a new career in construction. So we thank you, Lord, for everything that you're about to do, for everything that you, you, you've done. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Master Carpenter. So are you following the right, the right role model if you follow Jesus? Um, <clears throat> Pathway from Boys to Men is a nonprofit organization uh, founded in uh, September 2005. Our mission is to provide the life skill resources that make a difference to the underserved. Um, we have been providing services since, uh, since about 2007, 2006, where we started our uh, initial uh, housing program. We were providing housing for about five years where with men that was get, coming out of prison or they were coming back from Iraq or they were uh, homeless that we were providing housing for them. I also, I wanted to just, before I, I, I think I'm, I got a little something out of order, I wanted to introduce a couple people in the audience before we start the work. Uh, I wanted to thank the mayor, uh, Aquanetta yeah. Warren. Yeah. Ellen, um, uh, yeah. uh, give an opportunity, uh, give it pathway an opportunity to have a place to host these uh, workshops. So thank you. And the Carpenters Union is last but not least. We want to thank them for coming. Yeah. We are so grateful that we have the opportunity to be blessed by them. Um, thank you. So we are um, <clears throat> right now. Um, breaking some new ground in what we're doing over the last year. We've been doing introductions to construction. I wanted to uh, ask my uh, board member, Lakeisha Baden, to come up and say a few words. everyone welcome I just want to go over a few things that you have in your packet um, like James was saying the premise started for the introduction to construction started last April and the idea was just to introduce construction careers um, in the Inland Empire you know the lack thereof and just getting the community involved especially minorities involved in construction because there's not a lot of minorities that know about this career opportunity that you know uh, is in construction. So that was the whole idea. But then it just kind of you know grew to uh, the idea of us being able to partner with the Carpenters Union and offer life skills classes. So we wanted to introduce that as well. So, but after you complete the life skills classes, then we will then you can graduate from there and move on to uh, my brother's keeper. So I'm sure they'll talk a little bit about that but just understanding this is an opportunity to share amongst with your friends. And it's just not for men, it's also for women as well. So this is a great opportunity to build a career, like James was saying, it's not a job. And, and I can tell you, just if you look at some of the, the, um, the uh, 
uh, cost of living wages for apprenticeships and then if you go you know move on it's it's more than you know a nine to five job so um, with that being said a little bit about our organization we have a training hall in uh, Ontario uh, roughly about uh, 50,000 carpenters that we represent throughout the, the southwest region uh, that is encompassed by six states uh, Southern California uh, Utah, Colorado, New Mexico, Arizona, and Nevada. So, um, very large footprint for our council. Um, we represent, like I said, about 50,000 right now. Uh, at a peak before the recession, we were at like 58,000. So we're slowly building back up. Um, and there's a there's going to be a mass void uh, here in the near future. Um, you have a lot of uh, the, the baby boomers who are getting ready to retire, and so we there's going to be a big big need for skilled tradespeople mm -hmm. here in the near future. So we, we need uh, good uh, people to fill those those jobs, and I, I hope some of you guys will consider uh, joining the uh, the carpenters union. Yeah, it's a great program. It's been nothing but good to me in my life. Uh, give me a, a a great chance to provide for my family. Um, and do so with dignity and when I'm ready to retire I can do so and enjoy my golden years with a great pension and health insurance and uh, it's, it's a great wage and it's a good program. People from the local community can, uh, should be on these job sites, right? Mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. right, we live here, we, we should build here. Right? Yeah. Hello, right. Right so uh, it's not going to fall in our laps. Everything that we need, we have to get up and go get it every day. Grinding. That's what it's about, ladies and gentlemen. You guys didn't come here today just to sit sit here and hear us talk. We're coming here with some information for you. And it's boots on the ground that's going to help turn this thing around. They teach you how to, uh, the basic fundamentals of the trade, handling materials, um, uh, using tools, basic math, brushing up on all that, that uh, elementary stuff we did. Once you find a job, a trade that you made it into, they give you $1,300 and provide your tools. Who could beat that? <laughs> right? Right, right. So working with Pathway, um, my partner here, they, they sent me a message. Hey, let's get down here. Let's talk to the people. We have a similar program that we want to uh, partner up with over here at Ontario Training Center. And it'll be a, a, a conduit for you guys to be able to go through a uh, process, three week boot camp. It's a lot of flakes out there, ladies and gentlemen. The whole industry understanding, uh, the, the millennials, the uh, baby boomers, just that whole generational gap. The transition is happening, excuse me, Generation X. And, uh, we're gonna be the ones helping the uh, millennials mm -hmm. to understand uh, what it is we fight for mm. you know we were the ones that had to sit home with moms or uh, single parents and make make our own food stuff like that watch ourselves so we know a little bit about that struggle the Millennials there's a whole story about that right there a lot of coddling you know they they need to be nurtured a little bit more no, no, no don't take it any kind of way it's just what's happening right now. We're seeing it. The, what this boot camp is gonna teach you guys is uh, dress code etiquette. Popping up on a dress job site, looking a certain way. You gotta look the part too. We're seeing guys come into the union hall, pants sagging. Come on, man. Right? Smelling like weed. Flip I gotta give it to you. Uh, I didn't come all the way out here to sugarcoat it and make it sound like it's all good. You, you understand what you're getting into before you go out there. Clean up the act if you have to, and uh, just keep it real with yourself. It's going to be there tomorrow, so if it's not for you right now and you feel like, hey, I'm not ready, that's cool. Try next month when your system gets cleaned out. But it's a very uh, dangerous job site. Broke my hand on the motorcycle. I was off uh, 30 days. Since 2000, uh, November to now, been working constantly. Thank God, favor and blessing. 
mm -hmm. in my life. Mm -hmm. So it's about knowing what your priorities are. I don't have time for none of that other stuff. I got family, I got people looking looking up for me every day I'm coming home. Mm -hmm. um, so I have stuff that, I, that drives me. You guys are gonna have to find out what drives you. Quick story before I hand it over. Um, the Brothers Keeper program. It's um, something that our general president, Doug McCarran, put together. He's like, hey, there's issues out on job sites. A lot of African-Americans, a lot of um, uh, Hispanics, you know. Let's put a, a program together to where we can have these guys come to a forum, speak, uh, network with each other, see if there's issues out there. And if there are, let's address them. Let's figure out solutions. So that's what, we've had, well, that's what we have in place now. That works, uh, that's partnered up with the Brothers Keeper program. So um, you guys will have a chance to talk to mentors mm -hmm. and ask guys, hey man, how do I succeed in the trade? W what do I need to do? How can I get where you at? Right? Mm -hmm. and, and then, you know, it's that eager and willingness to learn is what's going to help you down the line. Uh, political stuff that's happening is huge. We need people that's champion and, and uh, stewards for us out there. When we need that uh, PLA, or we need a uh, contractor in that area, uh, that's a, a non-responsible contractor, not paying area standard wages, abusing the workers. These people can't speak for themselves. You know, for whatever reason. It's not a union or a non-union issue, it's about uh, responsible contractors doing the responsible thing so we need to support people like this come to your city hall meetings mm -hmm. stand up with that two minutes of time hey my name is such and such I live in the area and I would like to see this if we could how can we go about doing it this is a big election year coming up um, Jimmy here he'll go over some of the uh, uh, different uh, political things happening in this area and throughout the state, so you guys can be involved and aware of that. All right, because we're finding out a lot of young people aren't voting, especially when it comes to uh, minorities. Right? Hello. Mm -hmm. Right on. So, um, thank you guys again. Yes, sir. And, um, thank the, you. One of the gentlemen from the Brothers Keeper program, he's coming from Whittier. Uh, he's going to endeavor to get here tonight. Marcus. Yeah. So, thank you guys. If you have any questions, uh, Hit us up at the end. Yes, sir. Yeah. Because we have so many disenfranchised people because they have a record. Mm. They have no idea of the different things they can get involved in. I, and I meet with them all the time. So I'm so glad to hear that. Absolutely, yes. Um, sorry. Uh, I actually just uh, signed someone up today to become a carpenter. He was a convicted felon, just got out of prison, uh, got him a job and um, you know, hopefully providing opportunities. That's why we're here today, nice. is to provide opportunities. Um, so hopefully he'll, he'll lead a pr very productive life um, you know, with the carpenters and help him from going back to the system because I know once you're stuck in that system, it can right. be right. Uh, and you know what? Uh, I'm a good example of um, what the mayor is, is talking about right now. 16 years old, going to Dorsey High School. Uh, I was I was a victim of peer pressure, mm. you know, following with other people. Hey, let's go do this. They charged me as a juvenile, or I was a juvenile. But they charged me as an adult. Uh, they took. I had to sacrifice some of my life, um, you know, in, away from home as a juvenile. Once I turned 18, then I went to the state. I'm saying all this to say that we have a second chance. I never thought I'd be right here with the Carpenters. You know, just a career. Look at them now. It, it's something that I knew I wasn't going to turn back, man. I, I have no other choice. You know, it was either this or it's not going to be McDonald's, right? Yes, sir. So, uh, I'm, I'm just saying that to you guys that don't get discouraged. It's, it's this easy. Showing up to a job site early in the morning, 6 o'clock, 5.30 in the morning, whatever. Just, I sit out there and I stalk the job site. I'm sitting there watching who's coming through. I see guys, I hit them up. Hey, how you doing? My name is Kyle. 
I'm a first stage apprentice from the carpenters. That's how it was. That's how it still is. Our contract, we can solicit. Hmm. We can go to any of our contractors and we can, hey, how you doing, man? My name is such and such and I'm, I'm looking for work. They can hire you right then on the spot if they need guys. Right? Yes, sir. So for somebody to say, hey, man, um, they're not hiring out here like that. It's consistency. Showing up every day. You can show up Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. These same foremen, um, they had to do that themselves at one point when they were apprentice. Uh, I went on to be a uh, from apprentice to a lead man. Took advantage, full advantage of that training center. At fifth stage apprentice, I ended up um, uh, getting my welding cert, LA City. Um, I was with a smaller co contractor that did pretty much everything. So I was switching it up from the exterior to the interior. By the time I went to one of those uh, uh, premier looking companies, PCIs or khs &S, oh man, they like, hey, where, where you come from, man? You're not like the rest of them. This is people's stereotype, you know? Mm -hmm. but when we get out there and we, with a purpose, hey man, it's, it's no games. Mm -hmm. We're professionals. And we gotta exercise that. Even though you're past whatever, we still, we're here now, making the difference, changing our lives. We're taking it in our own hands. Yes, sir. If it's, if it's meant to be, it's up to me. Uh, yeah. Uh, and that's why you guys are here today, right? Uh, obviously looking for opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, and the Carpenters Union has nothing but opportunity to, to offer you guys. Um, so I want to kind of go into our apprenticeship. Uh, we have some uh, all-star instructors here from uh, actually various uh, locals, right, Johnny? You're so yeah, we got Los Angeles uh, trainer and uh, Dave Burrow from 944. Um, you guys don't mind coming up and maybe sharing a little bit about our apprenticeship. Yeah. Yeah. Well, first of all, thank you all for being here. I mean, it shows that you have the desire uh, to have change and, and maybe have opportunity. I think that's where we all started. I know I did. You know, I grew up in Rubidoux, and uh, my family didn't have a lot of money. And by the time I was 17 years old, my girlfriend and I were expecting a baby. And I entered the world, the rat race, here we go. Like, what, do you, what, what can you do? Well, I can do whatever you want me to do. Uh, what, what, you give me an opportunity. So I saw an opportunity and I jumped on it, thankfully, for a neighbor. Uh, and I jumped on it years ago. And in 1980, I joined the Carpenters Union. And, and uh, it changed my life. It instantly changed my life because I became part of, part of a bigger picture. And uh, give up, I have to give all the glory to God, first of all, uh, and first and foremost to the Lord. Um, to my dad for kicking my butt when I needed my butt kicking. Mm. Kicked in, you know, because uh, uh, life is not easy. We all know that, right? Yes, sir. It's sir. Not. But you know, you give a good man an opportunity, and and he, and he gives it all he has. Uh, we we can achieve. You know, I didn't even have my high school diploma, mm. and I took the test and got my GED. And later, um, I went back to school and be, got my California teaching credentials, and I was blessed with the job, uh, a dream job for me of giving back to the system that helped me get through. And I see all the time uh, in the apprenticeship, two kinds of people. One, well, it seems like maybe someone pushed him in there and said, no, you can't be a carpenter. And then there's people in there that generally want to be a carpenter. And I, I think depending on, on your desire, sometimes determines on how far you get. You guys agree with that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. You got yeah. a desire. And with that desire, that uh, comes great responsibility, mm -hmm. driving a lot, working hard, buying tools all the time, getting up the crack of dawn, getting home late. But you know what? You get used to it and you love it. Mm -hmm. And after a while, it becomes part of who you are. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I can't say anything but good things about the Carpenters. I love being a, being a teacher there. And I love instructing people coming through the program and giving back to um, the program that gave me so much and there's so much that they can give to you guys too and girls. Thank you. So that's pretty much all I had to say. Thanks for listening and thanks for having me here. Yeah. My name is John Barlow. I'm a uh, interior systems 
basement structure, metal stud frame and drywall. I made a career out of hanging drywall. You know, when you're a kid and you're growing up, you're not thinking, uh, yeah, that's what I want. It might not be what I want to do. Uh, when I was introduced to it, I started non-union. And I started out at a low rate and uh, didn't know any better. And I was, when you pick up 12 feet sheets and you're hanging sheets all day long of drywall, Kyle will contest, uh, it's, it's pretty demanding. And if you're not getting health care, you're not getting a, a, anything to look forward to. Because we're, we're in an opportunity to retire, right, at some point. Mm -hmm. We're not young forever, unfortunately. Right? Uh, so I was introduced by a buddy of mine did uh, worked as a union car. Uh, he was a carpenter. Uh, he, that's how I got in the trade. Because a lot of times we don't know about this. Mm. We don't we don't know that about this opportunity unless somebody introduces this to us. Um, so he introduced me and he showed me his paycheck and he uh, compared it to mine. And I said, "You gotta be kidding me! <laughs> you're doing we're doing the same thing and you're making twice as much as I'm making. Mm. And you got health care? I didn't have health care. And uh, it, so it, I, it opened my eyes to an opportunity and I had a friend introduce it. And this is a great opportunity to get before y'all because. Uh, to to express uh, and we're we're letting you we're bringing information and we want to open your eyes to what's out there and the possibilities and the, what's the purpose of working union uh, union gives you representation uh, when you go to work and it gives you it, it gives you uh, motivation when you see it uh, what it offers um, this is a great opportunity for middle class living as close to it as possible. Uh, how do we move with inflation? We got to have something. We got to have a standard to work at. Uh, the union provides that standard, and we go out and we get rewarded for busting our tails, mm -hmm. making, you know, hanging that drywall, mm -hmm. uh, lugging that uh, 16 gauge metal studs, and uh, it's fun. You got to have to to earn this. Truly, in this trade, you got to be passionate about what you do. And being on the training side and having the privilege to uh, to be an instructor now. All instructors, by the way, are from the field. We don't, they're not hired professors out of here and here. <laughs> We're sharing our experience. Mm. So when you come into the apprenticeship, it's it's not where you're at, it's where you're gonna be. It's a vision, right? It's a long, you gotta see the vision. You can't, it's not a job, it's a career. It's an opportunity to have some a silver lining. And that silver lining is buying a house, being able to put a roof over my family's head, mm. uh, having that same opportunity to uh, live with and grow with inflation, so I can have a decent living. It's not a get rich scheme, you know. If it was, we'd all be rich, but uh, it's just an opportunity to make a good living, and it's been good to my family and myself. And uh, I appreciate my friends for getting me in. Um, and it, it is a grind. There's no light. There's no eating around the bush. It's a grind. We get up every day. We sit in traffic, going and coming. We work. We work our tails off, but it's a dollar a minute when mm. you're a journeyman, and that's that's it. Blows me away. It blows me away to this day, and uh, it's a great opportunity to uh, to be able to give back my experience. And that's the difference between our apprentice and mm. say an instructor. Uh, he goes out the door. I don't even like the title instructor. I'm a carpenter. And I want to share my experience. It's called paying it back, right? Mm -hmm. So it's evolution. That's how this part for the union partners. That's how we survive and that's how we're going to move forward. And uh, we're reaching out because we want you to be on board. We want you to get on board and give you that opportunity at work. And uh, that's what you, we all deserve. A chance to be able to put a roof over our family's mm -hmm. heads. And uh, man, I can go on all night. Because my passion is real on it. Yeah. I wouldn't be here if I wasn't passionate about it, and uh, I appreciate everybody. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, John. Thousands of dollars there. Um, so there's plenty of work out there, uh, especially where he comes from, LA. It's just bursting at the seams with work. Um, with the uh, the measure um, M yeah. that passed. Uh, how much was that? That was like some mind blowing oh, work. That's ongoing. That right there is <laughs> a tax that's going to keep going. It doesn't have a life on right now, so um, billions of billions, billions of dollars uh, over the life of it. You got to look at it like that, right? The the Olympics, they're uh, going to be doing a lot. While well, it's already happening, they're uh, 
um, building upon the infrastructure that's already there. Uh, you have the LAX, which is always under work. Um, but getting more into the Inland Empire again, um, we have a lot of industrial development, which is occurring at a rapid rate. Um, the land is cheaper out here, opposed to LA, Orange County, San Diego County. Uh, so you have uh, land acquisitions just occurring uh, by the minute. Mm. And um, so developers are uh, jumping on board and starting to develop projects. And um, you know we, we attend city council meetings to ensure that that goes at least to local hire. Um, so that's our stance. We want the local residents to benefit from the project, not some you know, out-of-state contractor. We feel like if you guys were carpenters, you lived here, you should be working on that job. So we're actively, Kyle and I and the, the rest of the representatives that have the honor to uh, have this position uh, are ensuring that that work goes to the local community. So uh, it's a privilege and an honor to do what we do. And I wake up every morning uh, very excited to, to get out of bed and, and jump in the truck and get to work and start kicking some, some butt. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so, uh, Thank you. Uh, and Jason uh, Cortez, uh, he's a he's a fellow rep. Yeah. Um, How y'all doing? Doing yeah. great. Yeah. We left at the same time. <laughs> I, had, I took ways. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my name is Jason Cortez. Uh, I've been in the industry 20 plus years. Uh, started out of high school, kind of rough terms, taking care of mom and brother, you know, but found out at pretty much about 25, 26 that I need to get more career oriented. You know, I worked for a contractor where I was the delivery guy. And uh, I worked my tail off, man. I would show up with truckloads of material and stack them in these high rise elevators. And I did that for about five years, but I you know, figured out that, hey, I gotta get you know, career oriented. I, I gotta have something for the future. So the gentleman that I was working for, a really great man, you know, I asked him, I, I want an opportunity. And uh, he gave me that opportunity. And uh, I never looked back, never looked back. You know, I, I knew what was out in front of me. Uh, my dad was a construction superintendent, you know, and uh, I just took it and ran with it, man. I always, you know, showed up on time, worked my tail off. And uh, I did that for, you know, for 20 years. I recently just got picked up by the Carpenters Union. I like, like Jimmy and uh, Kyle, I'm a representative, but what I do is I represent an actual, uh, I do ceilings. That's what I did in the field. And uh, I work for the union side of it where you have all the contractors and we keep a, a level playing field to make sure that, you know, the contractors that are within the union, that they're not cheating the system or that type of thing, you know, and, uh, very, very educational. You know, um, I, I, I wouldn't be where I'm at today if it wasn't for the Carpenters Union. You know, it's 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 more than a job. You know, it's 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 a career. It's something that you can definitely you know look at as not going to to work for a paycheck today, but you know you keep uh, keep your mind clear and, and carry yourself well, and it's a paycheck for tomorrow. You know, something to look forward to, you know, 30 years down the line, you can walk away and say, hey, man, I, I did well. I had a, you know, decent lifestyle. I had a roof over my head. And, uh, you know, I can retire and know that I did well for the community and uh, had fun doing it. So I can do it. It's just that's not where I come from. Uh, we can do anything, right, if we put our minds to it. Um, and then we have the mill rights. Uh, steam turbines uh, that generate electricity. Um, they also work on like conveyor belts, robotics, uh, really fascinating stuff. We also have a division that builds uh, satellites for NASA, uh, aerospace. Carpenters. Um, carpenters are doing that work. Solar panels, that's the big craze now, right? Everything's gonna go green, mm -hmm. that's good. That's a good thing. Uh, so, you know, we, we have our hand in that where we're ensuring that that's carpenter's work. We're, we're installing uh, solar panels, yes sir. How many specialty jobs is there in the carpenters? As far, so like the uh, aerospace would be kind of a, uh, like oh. Plaster, There's like floors, over 80, 80, over 80 uh, trades. 80 trades. So there's over, 80 yeah. different <laughs> opportunities yes. for, oh, yeah. you know, and they can, 
specialize in it. Concrete. There's a there's a lot of opportunities to get work in the carpenters as being a carpenter union in the carpenters union, and we want you to take advantage of it. I um I wanted Lakeisha to say something oh. real quick. She had something that she wanted to put a little clarity on <laughs> with uh. Okay, so I wanted to talk a little bit about um, some of the points that they uh, they touched on. And one of them is the billions of dollars. <clears throat> so that means there's billions of dollars which you place the trillions of dollars out there in the construction industry. That means job security for everyone. You know, they're looking for not only um, local hires, disadvantaged hires, but they're also looking, you know, once you get to that certain point, you can even start your own business because they're looking for small businesses as well. So take advantage of this opportunity. Like they said, go back, do your own research, look into it, see the, the various trades that may appeal to you. But they also are looking for people who are serious. You know, they're not going to take in anybody. And exactly. that's where um, Pathway for Voice to Men's Life Skills classes come in. So we'll, again, I want to reiterate that it's going to be eight hours of life skills going over communication, dress code, time management, in order so that we can funnel them um, you know, over to my brother's keeper. They're gonna look at our um, graduates and say, okay, you know what? They went through Pathways life skill classes. They must be serious, because you guys are gonna have to be on time for our classes as well, dressed appropriately for our classes as well. You'll, at the end of the classes, you'll receive um, a resume that you can utilize, you know, throughout, um, not just, you know, with uh, the Carpenters Union, but if you're seeking other opportunities as well. So there's an advantage to going through our life skills classes because they're gonna look at you like, okay, they're serious, you know, just like he said, one, you know, he got this, come on, give me in, give me in. It was there one day, the next day didn't even show up. So we wanna make sure that we are, you know, funneling people who are serious. So we have um, a sign-in sheet in the back so if it's something that you're interested in, please sign up. Um, there'll probably be a, a max of about 20 people per class. And then we're gonna just keep it going. And again, you know, you get a, you know, a foot in the door coming through a uh, pathway because we, they'll know that, okay, the, you know, who we're, mm -hmm. we're sending over, they're serious about uh, moving forward with their life and, you know, gaining a career. So I just wanna. Okay. Another opportunity where you can go to four year cert, become a journeyman, go anywhere in this country and work and you know and you're known as a journeyman. And it doesn't matter you go any Canada. So you get you can get a student loan, you can pay sixty to eighty, you can go four years and make eighty to hundred thousand. Mm. I mean it's proof in the pudding. <laughs> uh, if the if you get out what you what you put in is exactly what you get out. And if you're hungry and you're passionate about what you do and you want to pick up a good skill set that's going to carry you through life then uh it's there and uh man i never would have thought that i'm you know what what i got now because of the carpenters and what the decision i made to, to bust my huh mm -hmm. and, and uh and take this path and it's been the greatest thing that i've done uh not just for me but for my family and uh man it's, it's that's that's I wanted to throw that out there yes, because student loans yeah. and I can do a four year right here and I instead of owing that I could be making that okay. and so that's that's another opportunity different paths right some are going to take that uh, uh, that degree path you don't have to do that you can jump right into the carpenters sacrifice put down your hours uh, put your passion into your training and learning your knowledge is power you know with this trade uh, I, I can't believe I'm an instructor now, right? I, I started off from a, a pre-apprentice, all right? Started off non-union, jumped into this, went through a, went through my apprenticeship, and and it, it it's real, it's real, and it, and it's uh, and, and if you put your heart into it, it won't let you down. It, it it'll provide something there for you that you can look back and have a legacy and and be like uh, look back on your 30 years and and be proud that you handed something off to somebody else and taught them the way. And that's that's our motto. That's what we do. Is we we don't hoard it. We don't get information and hoard it. We share it and we make each other better. And that's what makes you a leader. Is lifting somebody else's ability without having to tell them. Just follow, just hey, get on board, and I'm going to help get you there. And we're going to do this together. These gentlemen uh, also work for the training fund. Kyle is a rep. He works for the 
for the actual union. Juan works for the actual union. I am one of the uh, instructors with a program called Brothers Keepers. And what it is is a three-week pre-apprenticeship training program where we bring you guys in and we give you the basics that you're going to need to be successful. We show you how to read a tape measure. We talk about what it takes to, to be a successful member, a union member. Uh, we go over experience that we share. Or we share our experiences. We bring reps in to share their experience. And uh, we try and get you the core skills, again, that it takes to be successful. Mm -hmm. Now, um, I always like to start with my story because I think my story is the best. I know you've heard some good stories. <laughs> uh, I want to apologize for being late. But uh, um, I started out in 1990, and I went through a pre apprenticeship program called the Century Freeway Program back when they were building the 105 Freeway. Yeah. And um, I, I successfully completed that program, but guess what? I didn't get a job. Other people were going to work, but the reason why I didn't get a job was because of my attitude. And so when I reflect back, you know, on that, I, I really hate that I messed that opportunity up. But I guess I just wasn't ready then. Yeah. So you can get all the training in the world, but if you aren't ready here, it's not going to do anything. So, so let's be ready here because this is going to be uh, experience like you have never had. This yeah, is not yeah. like working in any other industry, period, hands down. Uh, um, we don't necessarily check backgrounds. Um, your altitude, how, how hard you want to work is going to determine how far you go in this trade. You have to be <clears> self-motivated. I always tell people when you come to my class, when you go out to that job site, they're not going to welcome you with open arms. They're going to treat you just like anybody else that's coming in and, and trying to get this opportunity. You got to work hard. You have to show up every day on time. If you're on time, you're late. You need to be there a minimum of 30 minutes to 45 minutes before the shift starts. So when that foreman or that superintendent pulls up, they can look over there and they can know that they have a full crew to do whatever assignment they have to do for that day. And so when you can do these things, this can make you successful in this trade. You know, you also have to buy tools. And I always tell our students that if you have to borrow a tool, that's the tool you need to purchase every Friday. You know, we like to get, we, we like to say, buy a tool a week. <clears throat> you get a paycheck, you go buy a tool on the weekend. You know, maybe it's a press wrench, maybe it's an extra hammer, maybe it's an extra tape measure. Maybe it's something that, that you want to learn how to use. When I first started, um, I had a spud wrench and now, Back in 1990, I didn't even know what a spud wrench was. I just thought it was a cool wrench to have. And I, I'm serious. So when I showed it to my foreman, you know, he was very impressed. And I had no idea even how to use it. But that motivated me to go buy more tools because they like that. You know, and I was always a hard worker. You know, I'm the type of person that um, when, I, when I'm doing a job, I want to complete that job. I don't want anybody to come behind me and have to do nothing. That's right. When Mark is done, it's done. That's right. You know, and all these guys that's here with me, they share the same, the same passion about this. That's why we come out here and we want to talk to you guys. You know, um, um, I love to see fresh faces because the, the opportunity that I got for 1990 with the Carpenters Union is still available to you guys right now today. It's just up to you. You know, um, um, is it going to be tough? Are you gonna to have to reach deep down inside yourself sometimes because you're gonna <clears throat> run into somebody that don't like you for whatever reason? And you're gonna to have to deal with that. You know, but it's gonna make a man out of you. What they say, mm. anything that don't break you makes you stronger. Yes, sir. And I'd like to think I'm pretty strong because I put up with a lot of stuff. <laughs> you know, and, but but what happens is 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 you learn from that. You learn how to deal with people. And guess what? If you're a professional out there, that person that's treating you bad. He's going to respect your work. He may not like you, but I guarantee if you have that good work ethic and you complete all your tasks on time, nice and neat like you're supposed to, when it comes time to lay off, he's going to consider your work, you know, he may not like you at all. You may not even speak to him. But as long as you're there doing your job the best that you can do every day, that's all you can do. Making money. Making money. And it's all OJT. I know he already told you. On the job. Uh, uh, local 944, we have a list just like 1506 does of all of our contractors. Uh, that way you can directly call them and inquire about work. Uh, I did not bring any like Kyle did, but um, if you want some, I can give it to you. Uh, I'll text them to you. If, you know, so, you sure. um, so uh, yeah, this is a great opportunity at the Carpenters, and uh, we'd love to have some of you guys come down and, and uh, you know, open up the door for you guys. And, and, you know, Punch you in the right direction.
Thank you. Anybody else have any questions, questions? No. Thanks, guys, for coming. Thank you, ma'am.